Joe, right here on Remake TV. We have a really good show for you today. We have the one and only Marcia Brown. Marcia's going to tell us about her career, all the plays that she's run, and it's it, I'm excited to hear about it. I, it's been uh, I've heard a lot about Marcia, but I finally had a chance to meet her. Marcia. I want to welcome you to the show. And thank you so much for having me. Oh no, my pleasure, my pleasure. <laughs> As I said before, I, I heard. The, a lot about you, and I was told that all, I must all good interview stuff, right? all good, all, all good, good stuff. <laughs> all good. And uh, I was told that you must interview Marcia Brown. Okay. And uh, so I've heeded the advice, all and right. I'm glad we were able to make it happen. All right. And welcome, welcome once again to what's going on. So tell us, tell us who is. Unless people are out there that don't know who Marcia <laughs> Brown is, tell us who Marcia Brown is. Marcia Brown. Marcia Brown is an actor, a writer, a producer. A woman who believes in making things happen. A woman who was inspired to do this and is just running with it. A mother, uh, a Christian. Um, just a multifaceted woman, you know. It uh, certainly sounds like Yes, it. a I mean, woman who wears many, many hats. Wow. Um, a woman who has made a decision to do, um, to continue our cultural you know, our cultural, to, to, to carry our cultural bat, baton on in Canada because I am from Jamaica. Right. And so I do believe in our culture. I do believe that when you come to a foreign land, you know, you need to expose your culture, continue to do what you can't. Hide, hide it away or say, okay, I'm in a new country. As they say, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Right, it works right. in some cases, but you know, when it comes to my culture, I believe in it, I love it, and I want to continue to do it, so. That's From me. what I heard, you've been doing a pretty good job of continuing. Yes, yes, I, I think so, you know. Sometimes you can't get too conceited and, and, and toot your own horn, you know. Right. But at times, you know, you have to pat yourself. You have to pat on yourself back, on the back and say, you back. know what? I think I'm doing a good job. I, I've listened to people. I've listened to the feedback. I've gone to perform for churches and weddings and banquets and, and all of those things. And when you hear the people saying, you know, what you're doing is a good thing, you know, laughter is a good medicine, you know, and it makes it feel really good and it encourages you as well, you know. So all those encouragements have kept me going over the years. Right, mm -hmm. right. So you've, and you've really just taken that and, and run with it. So. I just run with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I hear, I hear you're running with it really well. And uh, the, we're going to talk about the play. I need to know my father. Because mm -hmm. I hear that's been running oh boy. extremely well. It has been. We started um, in June. Uh, we started for Father's Day weekend because I've been doing a Father's Day production for the past 11 years. Right. And so we started in June of, with this play, I Need to Know My Father. And it has just blossomed into something really bigger than excellent. we even anticipated. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about some more. Yep. But I, I want us to, we're going to talk about a few things before we get to that. Yes. Hold those thoughts. Yes. And uh, we're going to talk. Yeah, right. hold them and we're going to get right into everything because there's a lot to talk about. And you know, we, we hear about a lot, a lot of Marcy Brown productions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, people always want to know, how does something like that come, come to light? Because, you know, it's, it's, it's quite, it's one thing to be sitting and thinking, well, you know what, I'd like to do a play. Right. It's another thing to actually plan it, map it out, and do it. Yeah. Well, I have to say that it started, the whole thing started when I came to Canada, 1989. I was acting back in Jamaica. Did a lot of pantomimes and radio dramas and commercials, everything you could think of. I, I, I did that back in Jamaica. So when I came here in 1989, I wanted to continue to do this, but there were not so many opportunities for me and for a lot of actors who have left Jamaica to go to abroad. You know, when you go there, you really, you think when you come abroad there will be a lot more, a lot of more that's, opportunities that's because you know it's abroad, it's a bigger stage, right. and you know you're foreign, happening. and you know that sort of thing, and Hollywood, right. and and right. all that. So when I left Jamaica and I came here, I thought I would have been walking into you know more opportunities for me right. and more exposure and stuff like that, but it, it, it was not so. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Um, started did a couple of plays here and there with other promoters. And I got an agent downtown and was running around doing, you know, all sorts of calls for auditions. And But it just was not giving me, because giving me the work or giving me the outlet, you know, to, to expose myself on, on, on this, you know, the way I thought I should be or, or, or I wanted to do. And so um, it, it got frustrating. 
And so we started to write little skits, small, short comedic skits. Oh, okay. And we promoted ourselves that way through banquets and church functions and stuff like that. There were not a lot of people doing this, I should tell you that. Right. Denise Jones and, you know, she was Jones and Jones. Jones, they, and Jones. Yeah, they were doing that. And then we came on the scene and we started to do it. And people really, really embraced it. Yes, yes. And so one show, we, one performance, we would get sell to another one and we would get calls from that one. Oh, so Someone is getting married, someone is having a birthday, someone is, you know, and so one, it, thing led to the other. one thing led to the other. And so then I said, no, you know, it's more than the skits, you know, you know, it's nice to do the skits, but now I want to do something bigger. I want to do the plays, you know, and so I have a friend in Jamaica, a writer, his name is Aston Cook, and he, um, he wrote a play called Country Duppy. Oh. Yeah, back in 2000. And so I called Aston, you know, and I said, Aston, I need to be doing something bigger than this. You know, the skits are okay, but I need to be you doing to, plays. You want to you elevate know. your game? Elevate my game, yeah, that's the right thing. And so Aston said, yeah, man, um, you can use a script. Right. And, 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 and I really appreciate that because some writers, they tend to hold their hold work and stuff like that, thinking that you're right. going to make money off it and all of that, you know. But Aston gave me the script and said, Martha, you can do it. And I took it, never have no money, you know. Didn't have no. no money at all. I said, God, what am I doing? You know, because to, do, to promote a play, you're talking about, you know, more budget. You have to have a budget. And right. I did not have a budget. But you had an idea. I had an idea. So I went to my family. I called my mom and I called my sisters and I said, hey, this is what I want to do. Mommy said, you're sure you want to do this, Marcy? I said, yeah. I feel it in my spirit. And if you guys can back me up, then I will give you back your money and I will give you back something on top wow. of it. <laughs> And so I got it, and, um, and, and that was my start. Great. That great, was my start. Great. Yeah. Well, you know what? We're going to take a quick break. Yeah. And we're going to come back and hear how things have evolved from your start to where they are today. Okay. All right. Great. Perfect. We'll be right back on what's going on. Papa, let me tell about the good things you do. As the message said in the play, you know, it is important for every child to know who their father is, irrespective of the circumstances of how the child was conceived. Mama, I love you, but I want you to know you really love me, Papa, too. 